Nice. Hello. Guys, welcome to Good Works Tractors. I've got my new, well, new to me, John Deere Gator. It's an XUV 865R. It came with a hydraulic six-way snowplow. We're gonna go ahead and put it on. I took it off right when I got it because I didn't need it. I want to take it out in the woods in my hunting lease, but now we've got to go through the process of putting it on. I want to show you guys what it's all about. So this right here is a splitter, pretty easy to see, but um, it was a mystery to try to figure out that this product existed. I also have a receiver mounted hitch that can go on the back side or the front side of the gator. We took off the plow, hooked up what we thought was correctly the, uh, the winch up front there, the worn winch. Went to try to turn it on, it would not turn on for the life of us. Wouldn't turn on to the back side either when we plugged it in back there. Couldn't figure out what was going on. Ended up talking to um, the service department there and there's a connection way back underneath there, I'll show you what it is, that it's basically a gray plug that would mate with this right here and it was plugged into the electrical harness or system for the plow. It had to be unplugged and then re-plugged in to be able to use the, uh, the winch. So it gets kind of confusing, but what this thing does here is you can plug this into the one electrical connection that's on the machine side, and then you'll have the ability to connect the winch and the plow so both are ready to go whenever you need them. It's gonna be a lot easier to use this way without having to reach way back in there and, and try to uh, make that connection. Okay, so we're gonna put this plow on now. Taking it off is always easier than putting it back on. I am new to gators, okay? I'm new to how this whole system works, so it's kind of a newbie doing this, first time doing it, so if I can do it, you guys can uh, hopefully shorten your learning curve and get it done faster. So you can see this stand that's right down here, this parking stand. This plow actually did not have that when I bought it. So I just got that in. I actually, when I took it off, I kind of manhandled it and blocked it up on wood. So I put that stand in there and I think I'm gonna have to make some adjustments because the point is to get these points right here, these arms pushed back in here inside the brackets on the, the gator side. And then after you do that, you can see there's a groove right here. There's gonna be a pin that's tucked back in there. It's gonna fit around that pin, and then we're gonna take a little bracket here, and we're gonna lock it out. And just kinda of lock it right in place. You'll see these other pins, and one of these holes here, I'm not sure which one, they're gonna lock out, and that's how it's gonna stay attached to uh, the gator itself. Basically, I'm gonna to try to uh, lower this, this mechanism down by adjusting the parking stand, because again, these arms here have to come down, I don't know, three inches or so, all the way down to here, that way they can slide or I can drive the gator forward, that way that silver pin that's right there ends up right where the slot is here. Good right there maybe. Something like that, looks pretty close. And I wonder if I square it up. That looks pretty darn close. So I think it's pretty close now. I, I adjusted it down, shoved it around the floor a little bit here. We kind of have it already started in those slots. So I'm gonna turn the gator on, see if I can drive forward into it and get it to kind of seat in there like it's supposed to. Gotta go further in there. Well, so typically the first time you do anything, it is more of a pain in the butt than anything else. Hopefully there's some um, lessons learned in this setup here, but it is not exactly super easy to do. Uh, what I'm finding out, I mean, 
getting these pins to align and getting everything pushed back in there, when I drive the gator forward like the instructions suggest, it just kind of wants to uh, push the whole plow assembly forward. And you're going to see here this back hydraulic electric assembly, it's got play, right? So it does not stay in one position and so it kind of either sags down or you can prop it up too much. Um, it does not instruct you to hook up the electrical connection until you have made uh, the physical connection and, and locked it in here. So, you know, I'm kind of going with what it's saying on here. The next step though, if I don't get it connected, and it's only been five minutes, I guess, or so that we've been doing this, so it hasn't been forever, but it is heavy steel, so it's not a piece of cake to move around. But if that doesn't work, I'm gonna plug in this electrical harness here and see if we can fire it up and maybe get some leverage uh, to change an angle with the plow, maybe put some down pressure on it and get this to angle back a little bit and square it up. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so we've got about 15 minutes, the two of us, a lot of grunt work, a lot of backwards, forwards, shoving, angling, everything else. And then when it kind of just went, it went. So we're gonna take it off again and then put it back on. I think it'll go a lot easier this time. We're gonna give it a shot. Uh, a couple things that we did, we moved this brush guard back. We actually didn't have it quite in the locked back position, and so it was interfering, uh, making contact right here, so that was a problem. And then um, we kind of went through, and there's different ways you can interpret the steps that are on these instructions, and so it was a matter of figuring out what the interpretation meant. So we'll kind of go through that here as we take it off and then put it back on again. Okay, so technical term for the slots that are back in here are called headgear slots. And then this is a receiver pin that's back here. So then you have your male end that slides in there, forks around the receiver pin. And then you've got, you can see the end of the pin right here. This is basically your retainer. That is what's gonna be spring loaded. There's one on either end and it pushes out and locks in place here. This is installing a plow on a gator for the first time, take two. Okay, so we're gonna drive it forward, seat it as best we can in here. It still may require a little bit of wiggling back and forth, but uh, hopefully not nearly as much as we had to do last time. This is the first time actually taking the plow off with the stand on it instead of having to block it up. You know, the stand was missing, so I got that in the mail and put that on there now. So hopefully that makes life a little bit easier. Hold on. Okay, so we're pretty close. You can tell it was a little bit cockeyed there. Give a little bit, little jostle there. We're looking pretty good. I'm gonna try to drive forward the rest of the way. See how that looks. Okay, I got some pressure on that pin back there. So we're far back there. Got some pressure on that pin too. So that's good. So got that seated in there we're going to go ahead and take the pressure off of there that's going to be in the uh well it's going to technically be in the lock position right now there's there's um you know pressure being applied to those pins so the spring is not going to allow it to go all the way forward here once these pins come up and seat in the holes then it'll fully go into the lock position right here okay so at this point here what we're going to do is we are going to connect the electrical you can see both ends of the plug there. If you want to take a look, it'll only connect one way, just like that. And then I'm gonna turn it on, put it into float for the plow. And then I'm gonna to come to this side here and just push this up right up here in the top of the headgear. And when I'm pushing up, it should allow, hopefully these pins here to lock into position. And float. If this goes according to plan, it'll be pretty cool. Look at that. Second time was a heck of a lot easier. Well, 
that was about a hundred times easier doing it the second time and the only grunt force that we had to do was pushing up on the top of this headgear just to seat it there and that's right in the instructions so <laughs> it actually went according to plan but hopefully this helps you kind of see and understand and visualize the process and shorten that learning curve and frustration now let's take this thing outside and give you a little bit better look at what this plow is all about So the controller that's mounted inside the cab here has nine different functions as far as I can tell. Well, 10 if you include power on, power off. You've got an up, down, an angle left, angle right, uh, a closed V, an open V, and then you can just angle one side of that V or the other side. And then there's also float if you put it all the way down and hold it for just a couple of seconds. It puts it into float, which means it relieves that downward pressure. So there's nothing wanting to dig into the ground. Go ahead and show you these skid shoes here really quick. So these are adjustable and basically if you wanted to, say you had a gravel driveway and you didn't want this plow edge here to actually make contact, you could adjust these shoes so that they uh, are sitting down further, which essentially then raises up the cutting edge, making sure that your, uh, your plow edge isn't gonna push the gravel all off the driveway. So you can see there, there's the different positions that you have. For my application here on a paved surface, I do wanna make contact and so I'm gonna adjust it accordingly. And being that this is the first time using this plow, I may have to adjust this a couple times to find that right sweet spot. So the one thing I do want to figure out is right now this does have a really nice steel edge on it, but I want to put one of those UHMW poly edges on there that, you know, like I say, they protect like rubber, but they cut like steel. So it's going to be a lot safer for a paved driveway or a concrete driveway like what I have here. My challenge though is this is not just a simple straight blade plow. This is a V plow. And so I have to take into consideration the geometry of when it's flat, but also an open V like this and a closed V. So I'm struggling with how to kind of configure this center area here because I don't want it to bind up and break or crack if it uh, overlaps and I need it to be able to have a lot of coverage. So I don't know what the right solution is at the moment. I'm almost thinking I get the poly, the UHMW as close as I can, somehow find a little bit of an extra rubber piece, maybe a little flap that's really soft and flexible and pliable and put that in the middle here on either end. That way it still kind of picks up the snow instead of leaving a windrow right down the middle of the line. The last thing we are doing here is putting the winch on the back side in the receiver mount back here. That's the really cool thing about having a receiver mounted hitch is that you can easily move it from front to back. We have a wiring harness on the back side with a red plug and so that's easy just to mate it right up to. Put it in the little one inch receiver slot or one and a quarter whatever size that is and away you go. Well we got the plow installed. We're all good to go. We're supposed to get some uh, snow this weekend I think so I'm looking forward to using it. I still got to get that poly edge figured out there but I'm going to figure that out pretty soon. I'm also going to put a small salter on the back. This actually came with a big old salter. I sold that off already. I don't need that but I can tell when this plow is up on the front end it really picks up the back end so it's going to need some counterweight i'm going to put that salter maybe some bags of salt in here too just to kind of plant it to the ground on the back side the last thing we wanted to do is get these uh, black mountain all-terrain seat covers installed on here only one tool is needed just a socket size 13 all it takes and again that's just for the driver's side seat cushion i think it's some kind of like a ripstop nylon uh, they velcro in place they were not the, I mean, it was pretty easy to put them on, I guess. I had to unbolt this seat cushion here. This back one slid over, this back one slid over. We had to take this bottom cushion off here, although this was easier to do than the driver's side. But overall, I'm happy to have them. You know, the, the, the seat cushions themselves, the material that's on there, it's just a cloth seat. So it's very easy to stain up, get dirty, anything else. I suppose you could take these off and wash them if you wanted to. It would be a little bit of an involved process just to take them off, wash them, put them back on. But being black. I think these come in camo as well and maybe another color too. I think this is a good fit on here. It's just going to protect the seats, especially if you have a knife or some other tool in your pocket too. You don't want to uh, cut the, the cloth seat that's underneath there as well. And 
for me having the kids and the dog in and out of here too i'm not even so worried about myself as i am uh, them just getting in and out of here okay so here's a seat cushion we have this one done now uh, for the passenger side we got a couple hinge points right here there's a third that's on here must be they reuse this seat for other models as well so now we just have to do the seat back And you can see here you do have some built-in attachment points as well to perhaps secure something to it. Oh, you coming up? You coming in? Can you do it? Can you come up? Oh, good job. That's a good girl. If you wouldn't mind, give me a thumbs up or even a thumbs down and also consider hitting that subscribe button right underneath the video. That would really help me out. And if you're interested in more information for cool stuff on gators, on tractors, on truck stuff, on trailer stuff, all sorts of cool stuff, read that description underneath the video. You'll have a lot of cool links down there. Well, until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.